Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is accusing Russia of committing genocide in the eastern Donbass region. It's not the first time that he has used that word to describe the assault on his country. But it comes as Russian forces carve out a path of destruction, seizing small towns in the east with the goal of taking the entire region. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb has more. It's the local police in Lysychansk who have the grim task of burying the dead. This mass grave is filled with dozens of bodies wrapped in plastic, victims of Russia's brutal assault. Officer Danilo Barbaluk says, I think the Russians are dogs. They don't even understand what they're doing, but there will be revenge a million times over. 30 independent experts say Moscow's atrocities across Ukraine show a, quote, intent to destroy the Ukrainian people, saying Russia has incited a genocide. As Russian forces advance on this city, the police are trying to get out anyone who remains, like 74-year-old Katrina, who says she spends her days living in fear. The Kremlin is now throwing nearly all its firepower at the Donbass, with this Ukrainian soldier barely surviving a mortar attack. An estimated 10,000 Russian troops are targeting the eastern region from three sides. The province of Luhansk will likely soon fall under their control. But Ukrainian forces say they'll keep fighting, and it's weapons like this they plan to win with. These American-made howitzers, they shoot further, move faster, and can be hidden very easily. Ukraine currently has around 85 of the 108 promised by the U.S. The Pentagon says it's also sending high-mobility artillery rocket systems to aid the fight. Lieutenant Colonel Sergei Zayika is the lead trainer here. Why are howitzers so important in this fight? These howitzers let us hit the enemy behind their front lines, he says, even inside their trenches. And Imtiaz joins me now from Krivivi, Ukraine. Imtiaz, always good to talk to you. So tell us, how dire is the situation in the Donbass region? Hey, Lana, good to talk to you, too. Uh, dire is a pretty good word. The situation on the ground uh, is pretty brutal. Uh, Russia is just pushing and pushing and pushing. It, of course, is aided uh, by pro-Russian separatists, uh, who we have to remind our viewers have been there for eight years. This has been a conflict zone. Uh, and all of that force has really just been pushing Ukrainian forces to the margins. In fact, we've seen images of Ukrainian forces pulling out of areas. And, you know, when we look at uh, some of the, the main cities, specifically in the Luhansk province, you look at um, these two key cities, uh, which we saw in our report, uh, one of them, if those are taken, and it's looking increasingly likely that Russia will take those cities, uh, that province of Luhansk is essentially in Russian hands. And the Donbass region, this contested Donbass region in the east of the country, which Russia has really been focused on, uh, it's only two provinces, uh, that province uh, and Donetsk as well. And I think from what we're hearing from Russia and what we're seeing on the ground is that what Vladimir Putin is trying to achieve there is, of course, to try to take as much territory as possible, but specifically this territory, so he can turn back to his people and say, we've achieved a strategic goal here. Because right now, he can't say a lot. Yes, he's made some inroads. Yes, he's made some gains. But to be able to speak to the Russian people and say, all of this sacrifice, all of this money we've sent, this isolation that we're experiencing, that it's been worth it because we've achieved this military gain. It hasn't happened yet, but the brutality we're seeing on the ground is pretty astonishing. Yeah, MTS. Uh, it was very interesting to see some of those U.S. weapons being used by Ukrainian forces. How important have these turned out to be for the Ukrainians? really important. I mean, this is a war. Weapons matter. In fact, just the other day, uh, Ukraine's defense minister said we need weapons, weapons, weapons. Um, and they're starting to get it. Uh, we, of course, saw those howitzers uh, in our reports, the fact that it's this kind of, um, you know, artillery uh, weapon system, which is so nimble, they can hide it in, uh, you know, under trees and really sort of surprise uh, the Russian enemy. And they've been using it with a lot of success. We also learned earlier this week that the Pentagon is sending even uh, more powerful long-range artillery to the Ukrainians. Uh, obviously, Western or other Western countries here in Europe are doing the same thing. Uh, and so, yes, these weapons are extraordinarily important. But I also want to reflect that, you know, weapons aren't the only thing at play here. We have to consider the Ukrainian fighting spirit. When 
Russia invaded, when Vladimir Putin invaded back in February, he thought he was going to roll in, take the capital Kyiv in a couple of days, and the Ukrainian army would fold. We all know that did not happen. And the reason that didn't happen is because of the determination, the grit, and the sense of national pride that so many Ukrainians have. And so, yes, they're outgunned, yes, they're outmanned, and yet they're still putting up this incredible fight because of that spirit. But again, they say at this part of the war, when we're starting to lose territory, when Russia is just grinding us, particularly in the east of the country, those weapons, those howitzers and those other long range artillery are desperately needed. Lana. Meanwhile, let's talk diplomacy, MTS. Ukrainian President Zelensky says Russian President Vladimir Putin has ignored his request to sit down face to face and begin direct peace talks. Is there any indication that Moscow is willing to do that? Well, Zelensky saying himself, he wasn't, quote, eager to talk to, to President right. Putin, but understood that there needed to be some sort of diplomatic solution to this. Uh, and I think most agree. In fact, just today, we had the French president and we had the German chancellor on the phone for 80 minutes with Vladimir Putin, uh, where they urged him to talk to President Zelensky and, of course, urged him to stop his war, to withdraw from Ukrainian territory uh, and to come up with some sort of peace process. But it's very clear that Vladimir Zelensky, or sorry, Vladimir Putin is not interested in that. Vladimir Zelensky is very much interested in that sort of peace talk. Again, it's not something he wants to do. He has a lot of conditions for it. But until we see some sort of diplomatic solution, we're going to see this fighting continue. Um, and I think when we consider conflicts around the world, it really is diplomacy, which is the most important thing. And yet we've seen throughout this conflict, which is now entering its fourth month, that there has been so much pressure to come up with some sort of diplomatic solution. And despite the really punishing losses that Vladimir Putin has experienced, uh, the fact that his economy is so isolated, his country is so isolated, even then, even with this sort of global exclusion, for lack of a better phrase, uh, it just doesn't seem to be enough. He seems so determined to try to have some sort of win here in Ukraine. But as we see on the ground, it just causes complete and utter devastation. And so whatever victory Vladimir Putin is looking for is a hollow one. And I think it's pretty clear that the Ukrainian president recognizes that as well, is that even if they do manage to push uh, Russia out of the, the east, out of the Donbass, what's going to be left? Look at Kharkiv, you know, this city in which, you know, they're able to push Russian forces out of. It's devastated. Look at those suburbs outside of Kiev. You look at Bucha, where a horrible massacre took place, where genocide being used to describe what happened there. That is not a win, really, for anybody. And so it's very clear that Volodymyr Zelensky wants some sort of diplomatic solution. The world certainly pressing for one, but President Putin remaining firm that he's going to push forward with this military uh, invasion here in Ukraine and, of course, just devastation. And it's really just the people who are suffering the most. Lana. All right. MTIS, thank you.